Hi, and welcome to the Marvelous Mammals Beaded Keychain Pal tutorial video. My name is Miss Vicki, and I am with the Wacomico County Libraries here at the Center Branch. And today we're going to walk through all three of our animals that we have included in the Marvelous Mammals. This is the more, of the three, it's the one that's a little more advanced. And all of them are fairly easy, but this is, these are the kind that you don't really want to uh, start out with unless you already know what you're doing. So this is going to be the kit. It's going to come in a little plastic bag like this with mammals written on it. I've already emptied out the beads. Um, you should come with each kit uh, an adequate amount of cordage. You should come, it could come with uh, two of these little keychain um, hooks and various uh, colored beads. And because our mammals all have pink noses, it also is going to come with some of these pink beads. So today, and um, each animal is going to have a timestamp in the description. So if you want to do, say I start out with the rabbit, and if you want to do the cat instead, which is the last one, we're going to have a timestamp at the bottom of the video so that you can just go to that spot instead of watching me do the one you don't want to do. So today we're going to be doing the Ramona the rabbit, and she has just got the most adorable little ears and a cute little pink nose and a cotton tail. And this one's a really fun one. It's a little bit tricky with the ears, but it looks a lot more complicated than it is. Um, the second one we're doing is Millie the Mouse. She as well has these nice, cute, huge ears and a uh, little tail. So she's adorable as well. I like this one. And then the last one we're doing is going to be Cuddles the Cat. Cuddles the Cat, I made black like my own kitty cat at home. He's got little ears and some cute hind feet and a tail and we'll have that one last. So if you are joining us for the first time, uh, one thing you uh, should know is a materials list. Uh, most things should be in here, what you'll need from home. Uh, bring a bowl, because I didn't include that in the kit. Uh, good scissors, uh, it can be just craft scissors. It doesn't have to be the serious ones like this. This is just what I had. And you need a ruler or a yardstick. Um, a yardstick, most of the instructions are written with yards in mind. Uh, if you are using a ruler, and I'll reiterate this every video, if you're using a ruler, just multiply times three. So if it's three yards of cord, you need nine feet. It's the same length. I don't know why I did this. It's the same length, but you'll just uh, multiply it by three um, so you can get the right amount of cordage. Um, so let's get started. And we'll start with the robot rabbit. Now we're moving on to the cat. Cuddles the cat, and I think I'm going to make my Cuddles the cat anyway, a black cat. Because I have a black cat myself and I like him a lot. He's very sweet. Loud and demanding, but he is sweet. So we let a lot of that go. All right, so our, uh, in case this is your first one you're trying, uh, let's go over some basics. If you got the kit, you should have beads. I recommend getting a bowl. It'll save you a lot of trouble and chasing um, because beads do fly everywhere and they probably will still fly everywhere, but at least they're relatively contained in here. Each of your kits should come with two of these little uh, keychain hooks, a variety of beads and an adequate amount of cord. So you can make uh, two out of the three of the animals that are in the kit. Um, if you decide you really, really like this, this activity and you want to do more, I can tell you that Pinterest has got no shortage of ideas uh, for animals and whatever you can think of. They have a rest, they have a beaded pattern for it, I promise. So uh, you can go on there and look up things and at local craft stores and big box stores like Walmart, Hobby Lobby, things like that. They will all have um, beads that are very reasonable price. I think I bought at one point a pack of 500 beads for $2.99 or $1.99. So it's not super expensive. Gimp cord is not expensive either. I think the a pack of five of these, which I'm using for demonstration, were like three bucks. So they're not super expensive activities. Um, and you can be really creative with these things. And you can even, uh, once you figure out the physics behind how uh, the cord makes it sit, you can actually make your own animals in and play with it um, if you like. And the great thing about this is as long as you don't stretch this cord too much, you can use it over and over. So if you find that you've messed it up beyond redemption, you can certainly uh, take it all off recycle the beads, recycle the cord to an extent. The cord does eventually get stretched out a little bit, but um, usually it's, it's, it's reusable for a couple of times. I know I've used a couple of times um, here and there. So let's get started on the cat. Um, this one has got one or two tricky spots, depending um, on which ones you've seen before. 
if you've watched any other videos, you might have seen a tutorial for the uh, feet, but uh, the ears are a little different. Um, they're a little different than the mouse ears. They're not quite as complicated, but what is good for one person might be more complicated for another. So let's get out a yardstick, which you should have, or if a ruler, if you have a ruler, remember, if you're measuring on the ruler, uh, you're going to need to multiply the yardage by three. And Cuddles the Cat requires, let's get this right for you. Mm, other way. I can't always get these backwards. Uh, Cuddles the Cat requires, if you can see that, 3.5 yards of cord and 143 beads. Um, if you should have those instructions and those numbers in your kit at home. So hopefully, um, hopefully that helps. So I'm using a different cord than the black cord simply because, well, one, it's more visible, and two, um, I don't want to use the cord that's already been bundled up for the kids. So, three and a half, we're going to measure out like so. One, two, three, and then half of 36 is 18, so we'll measure it to the 18, and then cut there. All right. Now, kitty cats and bunny rabbits and mice, all the animals in our kit, have pink noses, so I have included a variety, a couple of pink beads in the kit. So you see like a couple different pink beads in there. They're there for the noses. Um, and again, I'm gonna make my cat a black cat because I like black cats. They, some people say they're unlucky, but I just think they're adorable. All right, to start, we're going to, first off, find your keychain. Get that, set that aside. Um, you're gonna find two ends of your cord and kind of get them close to together as possible. You don't have to make it exact, but you know, the closer the better. Pull it all the way to the other end and you'll have a little loop. Make sure that's kind of straightened out a little bit. And what I like to do is I will flatten that loop out as much as I can and just kind of thread it through. You put it sideways, it goes through a lot easier. Um, get it down to the bottom part. And I like to just put two pincher fingers in between and grab the other end on the other side of the clip. Grab that clip, hold that steady, so you can pull the cord through. Be careful when you're pulling it through that you're not pulling only on one strand, because then you will have one end significantly longer than the other, which can cause problems when it comes to making sure you have enough cord to finish your animal. I've actually taped a piece of cord um, to the top of the table, making a little loop. You can tie a string to a doorknob, bedpost, um, whatever you find that's sturdy, you can tie a piece of string to and then hook your hook on that like so so you can pull against it just a little bit you don't want you don't have to pull it against it super hard but just enough that you can give it some tension because these beaded crafts do rely a lot on making sure there's enough tension um, to keep the beads where they need to be so with our cat we're going to start off with three so the first one, the first row, and, and you'll see on this one, they'll actually have uh, different colors on the bead pattern. Uh, and this one's going to denote uh, and tell you where to put the different colors. Now, of course, usually we use black for the eyes, but if we're using, making a black cat, uh, we can't really do that, can we? So we're going to use the gray for the eyes, I think, for the black cat. Of course, if you're making a cat in a different color, you can absolutely use the black eyes. Um, but you can't see them if they're black on black, so... Either he's taking a nap, or uh, he's gonna have to have gray eyes. That's okay. So there's his nose, and isn't that cute? All right, the next row is five, so we're gonna go ahead and just do five black ones. This will be an easy pattern one, because it's just gonna be all black. I don't have to count anything. Okay, and and sometimes when you cut your cord, you'll find that you'll have one curly end and one straight end. And it's just the way the, the scissors cut through. And um, what I found is the curly end doesn't want to go through the beads. They're actually both relatively straight this time. So the one that's slightly curved. Put the, uh, the curved end through first because that one, you only have to string the beads on individually. Whereas the other one, it's actually much easier if you can just string a straight end through um, all of them at once. It's just a little bit quicker. It's up to you, um, whichever you're, and if you forget and accidentally have to do the curly one, it's not the end of the world. It just takes a little bit extra time. So once we get through the ears of the cat, 
I want to share with you some little trivia facts that I found about cats. And, of course, as with every other one, if you have any facts that I missed or that you think you want to share, we would love to hear from you. Leave a comment in the uh, description down below. You can leave a comment in the comment section, whatever they call it, towel section. Whatever they call it on YouTube. Oh, we got all crooked. Stop it. So now we're on to the eyes, and that is a six beaded row. So there's our two eyes. <laughs> and then we need four more black beads. And the pattern they say to do is one black, one eye, two of the body color, in the middle, an eye, and the body color, just to go on the outside. And I just messed that up, but that's okay. I'll fix it. Doop. So this is probably the only spot on the animals, on any of them, except for the sea turtle that didn't have eyeballs in this pattern, um, where it actually matters where you put certain colors um, because otherwise the eyes just look really goofy if they're not in the right spot. Um, you don't have to put eyes in. You can just leave them out all together if you like. That is totally up to you. Um, I kind of like think they're cuter with eyes, but that's okay. It is up to you and your creativity you can do whatever color pattern. Um, the color color palette we included in the beads in the kit uh, are really great for making a calico if you want to make a calico cat. And they are that um, brown and gray and white and black cats, generally female. Actually, most calico cats are female. The calico patterning genetically in cats is carried on the female genome. The, uh, the not the female genome, the X. So boy cats tend not to be calico. You'll find a couple of rare ones here and there, but for the most part, girl cats are calico. All right, there's his eyeballs. So now we come into the weird part of the ears. So in this pattern, I'm not sure how well you can see it because this camera does not want to focus today. Um, we're gonna start one, two, three, four, five on the one string. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the other side. Let's go ahead and pause for just a second while I figure this out. Yeah. So, yeah, we do five. Okay, man. Uh, so, we're going to do five um, on his ears. And you know what? Just for funsies. Let's give him a little tuft on his top of his ear. So we're gonna string five over here. And I'll do two. And this will be the top. One, two. And then we will go and do the same on the other side. Again, you can do whatever color pattern you like. I know I say this a million times, but I wanna make sure you understand that and you know that you can do whatever color pattern and whatever colors you like for your animals. They can be as wacky or realistic as you like. There is no wrong way to do this. Okay, so now we've got our two ears set up. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cross them this way. But we're going to only run the cord Come on. When at the very beginning of these animals, you have so many cord, so much cord. Okay, so we're gonna run. I don't know if you can see really well, but I'm gonna run this cord through this, just this last beat, just this last one. Yeah. And then, and then we're gonna take this one. It's a little easier now that we've got them all kind of contained. And just do this one here. And this, this is gonna keep them together. And then, to give them their shape, we're going to bring the cord down through the last one. The first one you strung on. So this one right here. Uh, there's the last row we did. This first one right here. It's going to go from back to front, or from tail to nose. And that's just going to continue this one. Okay. And what that's going to do is when we snug it down, it's going to actually give it that pointy ear look. So remember back to front. 
run it through this bead here eventually. There we go. No, no, let's not do that. All right. So now we've got to put this on the side of the hair. So there we go. So now when we pull it tight, you'll see that these three beads and these three beads are making little points. And there's your kitty cat ears. I think that turns out really nicely. Okay, so now we're ready to start the body. So just like with the rabbit and the mouse, um, I recommend flipping it over because the ears are gonna be on the top of the animal. And I mean, even though they're pretty much the same from either side, um, I like to keep it on the same. And then um, before you start, let's make sure they're nice and uh, tightened, although we can always fix that later. All right, let's see. <clears throat> all the black beads, guys, all the black beads. Next row is five. And there's a couple more rows uh, before we do the arms, and then we'll fast forward through the boring to do the, um, the feet, which are a little bit more intense. And then with the tail is super simple. It's just stringing a bunch of beads, uh, single beads through, and that should be easy enough to explain. And then we'll come back at the end to tie off, but let's get started on the body. Whoop, where are you going? Back in the boat. And why, yes, I do talk to my projects. Why do you ask? do is actually lay that here and then we're going to give it a nice pull so it gets nice and tight. Now granted there's not enough tension yet on this to keep it there but if we pull the row below it. All right so now we're going to do his neck and that is four because it goes to in a little bit. Now their necks go from their head to their neck. It goes a little bit narrower so we're going to do that one first. And then we'll do their shoulders, and then we'll do his arms. And those are just a little bit tricky, but not too tricky. And then we'll do a skip the boring for all the boring bits, and then come back for the legs and the tail. Hey, where are you going? There we go. All right, the next row is a five row. Did you know cats are believed to be the only mammal that cannot taste sweetness? Let's see, that's shoulders. Okay, so. Six. Um, and cats are actually nearsighted, but they have far superior peripheral and nighttime vision than we do. Nearsighted means they don't see things up close really well. They see distance very well, but not up close. Or is the other way around? Oh, it's the other way around. They seem close up, but not very far. Ah, you can edit that out. And the cats are supposed to have 18 toes. They're gonna have five on the front paws and four on the back. I always think it's so cute when they clean themselves and they lick between their toes and their toes spread out like me. It's so cute. Sometimes they call them toe beans. They have a little bean on the bottom of their feet. In case you can't tell, cats are probably my favorite animal. So, oh, I missed a bead. Sometimes that happens. Oh, I missed a bead and you can tell because this cord is super visible. Using the black cord wouldn't have this problem. 
That's easy enough to fix though. I just pull it out of the beads until I get to the point where I'm, I need to pull it out of the whole thing, just the ones that I missed, and then run that through. No idea how that happened, but we'll work with it. We can fix that. All right, so now we're to the arms. Okay, so I'm going to follow the, the pattern idea on the paper, and I'm going to put in with some white paws and some gray paws, because you got some gray bits too. So you can do black with a little bit of gray. And each one is exactly the same. So to do the arm, you're going to simply I'm going to start with the black ones because you're going to start with the ones that are closer to the body first. Whoop. And then give him some little gray paws. So cute. Just. Okay. So now, simply, it's not too difficult. Hold it. Take it and. Put it through just the last three beads. These, these three white ones or gray ones can stay out here. And then you run the cord through just those three beads to make the arms. And then, of course, second verse, same as the first. We're gonna go ahead and do the other side. It is the exact same thing, and I'll do it again, just so you can make sure you catch it. Make sure we do the right cord. I'd hate to give him two arms on one side. Alright, so we have two arms. And now we're ready to go onto this body. So if you look at it, um, sometimes the easiest thing to do is just to uh, count and uh, make great notes on the side beforehand. Um, so we come out of the arms, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we have another row of seven, and you can tell they're all the same because they're all lined up. One, two, three, four, sevens, and then Uh, four, four, five sixes. So four sevens and five sixes. Whew, that's a lot of stringing. Alright, so what we're going to do is I'm going to have, uh, through the magic of editing, I'm going to um, fast forward through it so that uh, you don't have to watch me string essentially like 80 beads <laughs> in the same fashion over and over again. And we'll come back when I get to feed, okay? We'll see you in a little bit. So now we've gotten four of the five rows of six, and now we're going to start on the legs. They look a little funny, a little difficult, but I'm sure we can work through this. I'm going to count up the beads. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten beads all together, and the last ones are, I'm going to make them, because they have a different color scheme, I'm going to make them gray, just like I made his feet gray. So we're going to do, and how this works is you're going to string the ones that you want closest to the body. You want to string those first. So we're going to do, how many did I say? I lost count. I forgot that number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. So ten. So I need three gray to make his toes. 
and then we'll make uh, seven more black. That's five, six, and seven. So again, we're gonna start with the black ones because the close to the body starts first. Ah, stop it. They're trying to run away, guys. They might run away from you too. Just chase them down. Give them a talking to. these these work um, and this is one that we've seen in a couple different animals as well um, you're basically going to instead of doing two strings back and forth you're taking one and you're going to kind of work it back the other way so what you're doing is essentially making a loop here like you have up here and um, starting and making a mini mini figure here um, I have learned that you want to leave yourself a little extra space. You might want to snug it up real tight at first, but don't do that because you will not have enough space to bend the beads, much less string them later on. I've done this. I've made that mistake a couple of times before I figured out exactly what I was doing wrong. So learn from my mistakes. All right, there's one. So then each row is two feet or two beads rather. Two feet. They're one foot, two, two beads. Um, And you're just going to ring it through like that. You have to go back and forth, kind of like a figure eight pattern, almost. And each time you're going to fold it up. I feel like this is way shorter. Okay. Let's see. Fold that up. There's that. What are you doing? What do you think you're doing? Apparently I just made myself a nice little knot. There we go. And then one more time. Back to these two. All right. Now, we have his foot and it goes this way. So then, direction guys. Yeah. You don't do that last row. Eh. I was in a row running through back and forth. And of course I was like, hey, it doesn't be fine. Okay. So then instead of going through those last two, you just skip over them entirely and go through that bead there. And that will make his back legs. Boop. Kind of their back legs have those, uh, they're shaped a little longer than their front. So there's that one. Kind of looks like a frog to be honest, but I think it's cute. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and these little white toes. And you know what comes next? Second verse, same as first, but everything is symmetrical. So we're gonna go ahead and start the other one. Remember the ones closest to the body get strung on first. Three little toesies. Although technically he should have four, and the front one could have five, but I think it's maybe a little, a little hard to do. All right, so I'm gonna leave some space, make our loop, and start our back and forth. Figure eight, as it were. What have I done? What have I done? There you go. There's that. Just a smidgen. It doesn't make a huge difference in how it looks overall, but I like my uh, cord to be nice and flat on the outside. I just think, one, it takes up less cord, and also it just looks nicer, a little more professional. We are not professionals, guys. All right, so now, learn from our last one that we just fold it over like this. 
through this bead here. Maybe if I can get the cord to go where I want it to go. Just one. There we go. It was trying to go through all of them. There we go. So there's his feet. So now we're going to run six more beads of the black to make that fifth six bead row. Fifth of the six bead rows, yes. But instead of going through all six each way, we're only going to go through. Well, we're going to run all these here. Two on this side, and we'll just do three. Oh, it's only five. Ah, I miscounted. It's five, guys. So five on this one, or three on, two on this one, and two on this one. Oh, three on one and five, two on the other, doesn't matter what we do. Okay. So now what we're doing is we're going to take these and we're only going to pass through, pass both cords through this one bead right here. And what this does is it helps us get a better uh, anchor for the tail. If you did it one, if you did one bead off of these five, it would collapse on itself. What are you doing? What are you doing? Lay flat. Okay, there we go. There's that, and now we're gonna start on the tail, and it is simply one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten beads all together, and it looks like it's, maybe you can put a little gray tuft at the end so we have a little theme going. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and the tenth one will be a gray one. You see that right there? I like to lay mine on ahead of time because I feel like it makes it easier, and also I may end up with a tail a mile long if you just let me go. All right, let me see how that looks nice. They come right off the bottom. These are fairly simple. You just do one bead at a time top. These aren't nearly as difficult as stringing seven or eight beads at a time. You just have to get it through one. Yay! Alright. Where are you going? Almost there, guys. I hope you're having fun and you're following along with me on this one. I love to see these creations. And when I say goodbye at the end of this video, I will leave instructions on how to share your creations. We'd love to see them. Did, oh, you know what I found really interesting? Cats actually can be left pawed or right pawed. About 40% of the cat population, most are ambidextrous, about 40% of the population of cats um, is can be left or right dominant pawed. Just like you may write with your left hand or you might write with your right hand, cats can, well, they can't write, obviously, but they can definitely use one paw over the other to catch things or to, to bat around or whatever. Um, however, they did also find that males tend to be more likely to be left pawed if they have a paw preference, and females are likely to be right pawed. Speaking of paws, there are cats out there who have more than the five and four toes on each hand. They can have six toes on the front hand. They're called polydactyl, and sometimes they're also called Hemingway cats because there was an author named Ernest Hemingway who loved those cats and actually kind of collected them in his house. I believe it was in Florida. But yeah, he used to collect them. He thought they were really cool. All right, look, we're done. Okay, so let's tie it off. You do a simple overhand knot to finish. That means you basically take these two strings, you cross them over, make an X, and then kind of loop it through on itself, snug it tight, and then do it one more time for just to keep it secure. 
if you want it extra secure, like say you're hanging this on your backpack and you want to make sure it doesn't open up and dump beads all over the school hallway, um, you can get a little hot glue or tacky glue and have an adult, with adult supervision, of course, uh, glue that knot down so that it will go nowhere. So now I like to leave, usually I like to leave about an inch, inch and a half of string at the end, just to give it a little bit of uh, room to stay. And release my kitty from his prison and flip him over. And isn't he just adorable? I like the black. I'm glad I did black. He looks just like my kitty, except uh, my kitty is all black. But this one has a little white tail and white ears and white paws. I think he's adorable. And I hope you enjoy this one if you do it. All right, let's go uh, wrap this up. And uh, look forward to seeing you later. And that's it for our marvelous mammals beaded keychain pal craft. I do hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something about the different animals too, because I tried to make it educational as well. Um, and I hope you will send us pictures of your finished products to uh, the Y Comical Library's Center Branch email, which is center, C-E-N-C-E-N-T-R-E, at wycomico.org, which will be in the description down below as well, so you don't have to remember that. Go ahead and email those pictures to center at wycomico.org. We would just absolutely love to see the creativity you guys bring to this project. I know I did mine mostly very realistic, um, but I'd love to see how crazy and wacky and how cute they get, because they're all adorable. Let's face it, I love this, this kid, my, one of my favorites, because the animals are all just really, really cute. So we'll see you at their next video. Uh, we don't forget, we do have our Summer Reading Beanstack program going on right now. You can go on there and uh, sign up and tick off when you participate in different programs and sign up for a prize as well, which would be kind of cool. So hopefully you have fun and I uh, hope you uh, have a great day. Bye guys.